and I'm going to share the screen. So you should be seeing what's new on the internet. Sue, Sue's nodding yes, good. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do today, um, I'm gonna focus on finding new databases. And the reason is because the number of new databases online in the last year <clears throat> is totally mind boggling. It's, it's, it's not like I can even summarize it reasonably. What I can do is talk about how you can find the new databases that are of interest to you. So that's what we're gonna talk about. Um, then we'll talk a little bit more about family search. Uh, on Ancestry, it's very easy to pick up the newest databases for places of interest or topics of interest. But on family search, it's not quite as easy. So we'll talk a little bit about how you can look at the data in a way that's most productive for you. Then we'll talk about some other websites. And then we'll talk about the one major update on DNA research this year. <clears throat> then we'll talk about the biggest thing that's happened with new sources is international, where more and more databases are coming on, on stream international. I was uh, looking at a web uh, blog that I follow and the woman who uh, uh, posted it had just found a whole batch of records in Ukraine, which is where her family was from, as some of other people in this were. And then we'll talk a little bit about what happens when you come to a database that doesn't have an index. A lot of the databases that have gone online in family search are simply they have taken what used to be a microfilm and they put it online. So now you've got a microfilm with 600 images, but you don't have an index to it. So how do you work that? And then we'll talk about uh, recent research. I'm gonna talk about my latest research, which is weird, <laughs> at least in my experience base. And next meeting we'll do name searches and we'll talk a moment about that. So <clears throat> when you go to Ancestry, if you want to find their newest databases, you want to go to their card catalog. So the key is the card catalog. By the way, a copy of these slides is currently on our website, as is a link to any of the websites I mentioned during the presentation. Um, and then once the, we're done with the recording, that will also be on the website. You can sort, I'm going to show this all demonstrated in a minute, you can sort by the date added. So what you can do is you can sort all of their card catalog and say, give me that listed by the one that you put in yesterday, the day before yesterday. So it's the newest ones at the top. Then you can filter it by location. So you can look at a country or a state or a county. You can also search by topic. So what we're gonna do now is go over and Okay, uh, Sue, would you nod if we're looking at the front page of Ancestry? What are we looking at? It says search. Yes, that is the front page of Ancestry. Oh, okay. Oh, that says Ancestry. All right, great, thank okay. you. Okay, so um, we're gonna do search and we're going to do card catalog. So you can see, a lot of different things you can search. Most of us, if we're on Ancestry, we just search all the collections for whatever we're looking for. But here, if you do the card catalog, it gives you a list of all their databases. And I'm organizing those. You can organize them by title, um, if they were updated, the number of records, okay? Um, so I want to do when they were added, Okay, and then what it says is these are all the records they've got, but I can filter it by location. So what we're gonna do is start with the US. Okay, so it's now limited to the US and down at the bottom, I can pick my state. So I'm gonna pick Rhode Island. I'm headed to Providence. Now, there are records that are too specific to the state 
within which there are records that relate to the county. So I would want to look here and see what they have that's new uh, that relates to the state of Rhode Island, okay? Um, so what's a good example here? Um, Here are your World War II draft registration cards, which have been updated, and those are in for every state. Okay. So I can then also pick my county, which in my case is Providence. So this is the databases. Oops. Uh, what did I do wrong here? Let me do this again. I don't know what I did wrong. Okay, U.S. Rhode Island. Providence. There it is. So um, here I've got records on birth records in the early 1800s. Um, I have a specific cemetery from 1856 to 2013. Uh, my wife is from this area and many of her relatives are buried in this cemetery. Mm -hmm. um, so that's clearly been updated or added recently. Um, let's see what else? Persons in the city tax ordered by the city council. Um, so if I look at this on any regular basis, what it's going to do is keep putting the stuff at the top that's newest. So if, if I want to see whether something is still listed, are there something new? So this was updated in 2013. Okay, if I, if I run the cursor over it, it gives me the date of the updating. Okay, so here I'm, I've seen most of this stuff. So I'm gonna clear these and I'm gonna show a different one. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do Europe, and then I want to go down and do England. Where's England? There's England. No, where's England? Great Britain, United Kingdom. I knew it was in there someplace. <laughs> um, and within the United Kingdom, I want to do England, and then I am going to do um, Cornwall. So Cornwall is a place in Europe of interest to me. So again, these are the most recent. Um, extracted uh, church records. Uh, these actually turn out to be fairly important to me and my research. Um, register of, of uh, let's see what else here. Anyway, you can see what you can do. And, and then of course, Within this, I could pick to only take the categories that I wanted. So I could say all I'm interested in is newspapers. And these are three newspapers that relate in some way to Cornwall. Okay. Now I can clear that and I can say, no, what I really want is naturalization records. I'm really interested in naturalization. And so now I can see what the most recent are. This one was in April for Washington State. Um, uh, West Virginia's interest to me, that was updated in June. So that would be a potential interest to me. Okay, so I hope everybody can see what I'm trying to do here in terms of lining up the most recent databases to match with the things I'm interested in. Okay, so now we're going to go over Okay. Now we're going to go to Family Search. In Family Search, on the home page, you go down to what's called Browse All Collections. This one is hard to do unless you've done it and know to look for it. 
You can do last updated and scroll through the pages, or you can click through the catalog, or you can enter what you want, and you can always search their wiki. So let's go over to Family Search. So everybody knows uh, I make extensive use of bookmarks. So this is my bookmarks for genealogy. And there's family search. Okay, and you have to sign in. So I'm now signed in. So down here is where you can do browse all collections. Okay. Um, so here you organize it um, last updated. And of course they do it reverse <laughs> the first time. So this is last updated. And one of the things that's very frustrating but true is um, they're doing so much internationally now <clears throat> that your records here tend to be dominated by foreign, okay, with my exception. <sighs> Hi, Helen. I'm going to mute you unless you want to talk to me. I want to talk to you. I have a question. Yeah. Wouldn't, uh, if there was something that was just recently updated, um, talking about on Ancestry, wouldn't they have a little green leaf about it? If they, if they found you. It depends on whether it's indexed and whether that index matches what you're looking for. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, so some of these are not indexed, you're saying? No, they may be indexed, but one of the things that's constantly remember is that the indexes are not perfect. Okay. So um, the, the, the matches that they're doing come from fairly sophisticated artificial intelligence programs, but don't, don't depend on them to be 100% accurate, even 80% accurate, but you're correct. Um, not, not the same day they post it, okay? Uh, but if there's some piece of new information from the Virginia Vital Records that plugs into my, uh, my family, sometime in the next, week or so, that will appear up as a green leaf. Okay, you're right. Except so, this, I mean, this, it, this is family search, but it's the same thing is true for Ancestry. Yeah, so are we really gonna find that much more by doing what you're talking about? Um, I, I think the answer is an enormous, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what I tend to do is there are things I know I'm looking for. So for example, I'm going to stay really tight with new naturalization records for New England. I got family there that came into the country circa 1900, my, excuse my wife's family, okay? And they're gonna show up. Uh, I, I know that they became citizens, um, all of them, but what, what, for example, uh, I have the uh, naturalization materials for Marie's grandfather who came from uh, Lithuania. Uh, he had three other siblings that came over who all became citizens. I don't have all their records, I have one of them. Um, <clears throat> those records are potentially very uh, important because they can help me understand more about where the family was located in Lithuania. Okay, so when those come online, I'm gonna go after them. Does that make sense? Got it, yes. Okay, and, and I think it, 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 the way I would view it is there are things that are gonna come on here that I'd never look at. Um, I love to research a member of the family who in, ended up in Illinois in 1830 and was a neat guy, but I never really looked for the stuff for him. Okay. So this is the records, okay. Now, they don't let you actually filter this the way that we can, we can with, um, um, okay. But we can filter by place. So let's go to the United States. 
Now let's go down to Rhode Island. Okay, so now we're looking at the newest records in family search for, and what's the top one? Naturalization records, 1907 to 1991. Now we're gonna talk later about this browse images. What that means is there's no index to that. As a matter of fact, let's just have a little bit of fun. Let's take a moment's look at browse images now, okay? So we pick, we're gonna pick statewide. And what you can see here is we're looking at naturalization certificates for certain time periods with certain numbers. So keep that in mind, because we're gonna talk later about what the heck do you do next, <laughs> okay? All right, so let's go back. Okay, marriages. And this will give you the date. In these cases, they give you the date it was last updated. Um, okay. There we go. Um, <clears throat> so lots of stuff here. And, and depending on how recently you've been doing research in this particular area, I don't, I don't always do research every, every day on the, the my 5,000 people in my database, um, much less the 1,000 people in my wife's database, most of whom are French Canadian. Okay, so the other things you can do here, and you need to, I would argue you should definitely get familiar in detail with how to work your way through family search. So we have other things here. Let's look at the research wiki. Next. Okay, so the way the research wiki is organized is by geography, North America. Then we have to go down to the bottom to find the United States, and then up to find Rhode Island. Okay, so this is their discussion about how to do research in Rhode Island, okay? Migration routes, additional resources you can get. Then when you get down specifically to, this is the county of Providence within which is the city. So we're gonna do the county. This is the county information, history about it, populated places in it, and how you find more information on cemeteries, censuses. There's a 1905 Rhode Island census, if you aren't familiar with it. City directories, okay? This one is particularly, this one's been very valuable to me because they have a city archives website that has their directories. And this is a great period for immigrants for me. And you can sort of see what's going on here. And then I can still go back up and say, I want to look at Providence, okay? Which is now within the city. And here's, they're gonna give me some more information about Providence. Here are vital records. Now, uh, I'm, on, I'm on family search, but they'll say you can get this if you want to at American Ancestors, which we'll talk about in a minute. And, but if you do, you've got to pay money for it, okay? Okay, so that's, that's a quick look at family search and what's going on there. Any questions at this stage? Okay, so let's go back. These are the other major websites. Um, I'm not gonna go in detail into them, but uh, American Ancestors is the <laughs> old New England Historical Genealogical Society. Uh, it's one of the most powerful uh, research organizations in the country uh, if you're interested in New England. What they have done in the last year, actually a couple of years, is they've had a job, they've had a program with the uh, 
uh, Diocese of Boston to put all of the records of the Catholic churches online. And if you are interested in Catholic marriages, uh, 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 et cetera, in New England, particularly in the Boston area, and the Boston area goes out to Worcester. It's the big, big Massachusetts, Eastern Massachusetts. Um, you go there and they've got it by, by church. You can, you can do it. Okay, uh, Find My Past is the go-to site for British, Scottish, and Irish records. Um, and they do a lot on both sides of the Atlantic related to immigration of these people. Um, they've just been doing a bang up job of getting more and more records for various <laughs> locations within Britain, particularly again, church records. Um, one of the new things this year is that Roots Web is back. If you were doing research uh, 15 years ago, uh, you would have discovered the very first real online stuff for genealogy was coming, a lot of it was coming through something called Roots Web, which was a free information site. It's come back. Um, and within that, there's a place called, there's a website called World Connect and links to all of these are in, the, in our website where you can look at them. Um, this is, uh, World Connect is a place you can go and look at other people's genealogies. And I find that's particularly valuable. But what I'm trying to do is identify in some detail the uh, background of a possible female ancestor. You know, like in the 1800s, I've got Sarah and I think I know who she is but I really can't be 100% certain. But when I go here to World Connect, I can find other people who have Sarah who will talk about her, not from the viewpoint of, is she possibly the wife of the person I'm looking at, but rather from the viewpoint of, is she the daughter of another family? And that gives me a lot of information sometimes. My heritage continues to be a good location for European databases, Great if you have European DNA. Marie's done some matching through this. Uh, it's also a good place where you can set up a little personal website. And that's getting stronger over time. And the other thing that's new this year is stevemorris.org, which has always been the go-to <laughs> site for immigration. He has a lot of other search routines he's added this year. And a reminder, oakmontgenclub.org. Look under links, and that will give you links to lots of different things that are going on. Okay, DNA research, as far as I'm concerned, everybody knows I'm, I'm big on DNA. The biggest thing this year is the ancestry's through lines. So if you've done your DNA through ancestry, let's go back over there. So we're going back to genealogy to ancestry. DNA, okay, now these are my DNA results. I have other people I manage, so I, I, I can pick another test, like I can pick my mother or my wife, but I'm gonna stay on this one. And one of the things I can do is look at what they are calling through lines. So what they've done with through lines is they start with my parents mm -hmm. say, how many matches do I have here? Okay. Um, then they say, okay, grandparents, how many matches for each of my grandparents? These, in other words, how many people who are in the database of DNA participants in ancestry do I match with who we know relate to these people? So let me show you this one because it's interesting. This is three for my grandfather, James Christian, Neil, two of which come through my line, but one of which comes through uh, my Aunt Ruth, and that's David Beaumont. David may be on today if David's on. Hi, David. Um, so uh, you can see what they're doing here is saying, I have a match of 994 centimorgans 
with, I do, with David, which turns out to be about right for a maternal first cousin. But now let's go back. And there were three people, here, but why are there four people here? Well, here's the answer. After my grandfather, Neil, died, my grandmother remarried, George Phillips, okay? And one of her sons was Bob Phillips, who was my half uncle. So here, all of a sudden, I've got Jewel Ramsey, who is his descendant, matching with me. So this is lots of fun. But now let's go down to the really complex stuff. See, this goes on generation after generation where they're trying to see how well you can match. Okay, let's see if I can get that. Okay, so, well, we can, we can take Charles Gatlin. So this is one of my favorite ancestors. This was a Revolutionary War captain, okay? And you can see that I'm descended, I match people who are descended from all sorts of children he had. Christina, Jane, Elizabeth, Sarah, Aaron, Moses, Reese, Cornelius. Now, when you get this, you know there's a very good chance this is for real an ancestor, okay? Uh, and I could get, spend more time on it, but <clears throat> This is the exciting thing right now in DNA research. Foreign databases. Um, there's just a lot being added in local sources databases. You want to constantly be searching Google to see whether a place you are interested in, um, particularly this is true for Eastern Europe or Southern Europe. Um, many of these are sometimes in both the native language and English, not always. The records are almost always in the native language. And if you have the bad luck, as I do, as my wife does, that uh, half of her ancestry comes from Poland and Lithuania, uh, the native language can be Polish, can be German, can be Russian, can be whatever it was at the time by whoever was the administrative entity. Um, so I want to go back and we're going to go to genealogy, foreign and immigration. And here is Janetka, which I've spoken about a little before. This is the main go-to Polish site. Okay. So here you can see that they have it in Polish. Or if you'd rather have it, you can have it in English. Not all of them are is that lucky. My wife's family is predominantly from the region called Podlaski. Okay, so that pulls up a database. Okay, and if I put in a surname here, I'm going to enter Chodnik. And I'm just going to search. And here I'm pulling up all sorts of Chodniks. Okay, and this will tell me the surname, first name, father's and mother's name, this is for births, okay, parish and place. But what I'm interested in is Mihalina Chodnik and her husband, Ignacy Bodzikowski. Okay, so let's see if we can find them. They would have been married circa 1880-ish. Uh, so I'm going to go forward. <coughs> um, Nope, not 1880. Let's go one more year forward. Okay. I thought I had it here. All right, not going to have it here. So. Okay. Uh, oh, 
sorry, this marriages is what I want to start with. Marriages, 1882. Okay. All right, there we are. 1882, we have the marriage of Ignacy Bartikowski and Mihelena Chodnik. <clears throat> and the place they got married was Kolno, where the major church is in that region. <clears throat> uh, we know that these are my wife's great grandparents <clears throat> because when her uh, grandmother married, she married in a Catholic church. I mean, it was admittedly a Polish Catholic church. And they're very good about listing the names of the, uh, of the parents of each of the participants in their native name, uh, maiden name for the women. Is that website just for church records? Say that again. Is that Ganectica just for church records? Um, it is predominantly church records, but it's not only church records. Okay. Um, what I don't know, and I've never tried to research in detail, is how what good a job it does with uh, Jewish ancestors. Okay, since well, there's a different website for Polish Jewish records, which is JRI Poland. Okay, and I think that that's one of the things that I would suggest. You want to find your own database <clears throat> that helps you, but don't don't ignore looking here. Okay, now <clears throat> what I want to show you is. Now that I know that they, when they got married, and I know there were two children who ended up in the US, my wife's grandmother and her brother. <clears throat> I can look for other children born after 1882. Okay. And here, for example, is Tia Phil, born in 1890 to Nihalina Chudnik and Ignacy Wojcikowski. Okay. And I can, I, I will show you that there are uh, other children born later. Um, two more. Yeah, here's a Tomas. Okay. So anyway, I, I can fill the family out and then I can search for information about each of them. Did they get married when, et cetera. So I wanna go back to the original page for this. Okay, so here's the, uh, the original page, and I'm going to start in Polish. If I did not have an English translation, I'm going to right click. And what do I see right here that appears? Translate this page to English. <clears throat> Welcome to Google Translate. There it is. Now I'm going to go back to Polish. And I'm going to copy this little section here. So copy. Then I'm going to go to Google Translate. Google Translate. And I'm going to enter the text in Polish. And there it appears in English. So <clears throat> I know there are people who, for example, correspond with family members who don't speak English using translate. So I certainly recommend we use it as much as possible. Okay, last thing I wanna do is I want to go to, uh, gotta find this again, here we go. If you have a database without an index, most of them have ways of index, finding your index. So uh, many databases are not formally indexed. You can use an internal index. You can use a date, number, or name. And I want to illustrate a couple of those. So to do that, I'm going to have two. Okay, so I got here by just doing the going carefully through West Virginia, et cetera, and I wanted to get to 
um, uh, a, their will books. And I actually want to get to the will books for Wyoming County. <clears throat> okay, so here's the first one. It's the index to the wills. So I have an index. Um, or do I have an index? Okay, uh, the index isn't indexed, but it's alphabetical. So index to wills, okay, if I enlarge this, is alphabetical. And there were there at the time these were being done, there were lots of cute little books you could buy um, if you were a, a, a clerk. So this would be the pages on which they had different things. You, you would fill in the people who came in who had a name that began with N-A, N-E, or N-I on page 123. Isn't that cute? Okay, so we're gonna look at the mucks, okay? And I will just tell you looking ahead um, <clears throat> that that's gonna be on page 71. So here are the McDonald's, McDonald, McDonald. And here is McKinney, Samuel Mitchell. That's my great grandfather. He died in 1928, or his will was processed in 1928. It's in will book three, page 20. So using this index, I had to grope my way through the index, but it, it was pretty straightforward to do. So now I wanna go back to the will books for Wyoming County, George. Okay, and I could go to book two. Book three. Did I say two or three? Two. Two, that's what I thought. Thank you. Um, okay, and again, I can work my way through. I'm looking for page 20, if I remember correctly. For the image, George. There we go. Mm. Blank. <laughs> There's one thing on it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to skip that for the moment. Uh, but you you can you can do a lot of that kind of indexing. <clears throat> okay, now. Uh, the last thing I want to do is if there are any, not any questions on what we've done so far, I want to share with you my latest research. And then we'll open up for anybody else who wants to share research. So I have had the assignment of finding enslaved ancestors. Uh, one of my dear nieces uh, married the all-star cornerback for Duke University and her, he was actually a little ahead of her in school. And he turns out to be black and he turns out to be descended from a number of enslaved ancestors. So I had to learn how to do this, which I'd never explored. <clears throat> um, you can use conventional ge genealogical research to get a black person back to 1870 because at, right after the war, they were now able to vote, they were part of the census and such. And the trick there is to look for nearby white families who may be connected. And remember that any black person born before 1860 in most of the South was probably enslaved. Uh, however, a lot of states did not have full legal records for the blacks until the mid 1930s. If a black couple got married in Alabama prior to 1935, that marriage was not recorded. So we talk a lot about, in, the, in this research, they talk a lot about the 1870 brick wall. Prior to the 1870 census, the only references to enslaved people were lists of slaves, and they were by first name only, and age, and sex, okay? <clears throat> but the good news is they were almost always grouped by family. So you would have male 47, female 33, male 16, listed down. So earlier research almost always deals with legal transactions 
where owners transferred or sold a slave and their name was listed. And so here's one I have found. This is uh, Chop's fourth great grandfather. In the 1870 census in what's called Quitman County in Georgia, which is the right location, that's where his family's from. Um, we find in one page, line 36 is William Jones, who's 55 years old, who's white and has substantial property. And two lines later, we have what shows up as L-U-R-O-W, but actually by looking at names is London, Shepherd, who's black with his family. The great news for this particular research was in 1878 to 82, the county listed its property taxes and London Shepherd is listed as a freedman on William Jones's property. Pretty good hit there. <clears throat> then you go back to the 1860 slave census and William Jones is shown with 59 slaves and one family's sex and ages exactly matches London Shepherd's family 10 years earlier. So the logical conclusion is the Shepherds were slaves owned by the Joneses who became sharecroppers on the same land after the Civil War. So that's my new research. All right, anybody wanna share research with the rest of us or questions? I have a question. Yeah. Um, someone mentioned about the Polish genealogy for Jewish records. Um, it just happens that area, and I know your wife has family from Lomsa, Poland. Yep. That's where my family's from. So someone mentioned, was it A-R-I Poland for the Jewish genealogy? Whoever had that, well, you want to give uh, Liz the- It's J, J, not A, J-R-I dash Poland. Thank you, that's great. It's a wonderful website. Oh, okay. It's um, free. I think I remember that. I think it's it, it's in my notes buried and then I forgot about it. Thank you. And then also, I just want to mention, I, you know, I'm not really active with this group, but I might have shared with you before that I was searching for my cousin, uh, my, my mother's first cousin, and I went to New York and I met her. And uh, she's 97 years old and I met her. And so it was really exciting. That's all. Well, Liz, I, I, I know it's not my place to mention this, but you do know that if you do not have, if, if you're into DNA at all, you always try to get the young, the oldest generation you can get because they always, you get four times as much DNA power on their ancestry, okay? Right. With each generation. Um, I got my mom when she was 94 before she passed at 96. Um, the um, other comment I would make is be sure that you're linked into whatever she has in terms of photographs, records, anything else, because again, uh, uh, I don't, uh, it, it often turns out that, that uh, you get a lot of stuff from your family. Who else has an in insight or something you want to share? Nancy. If you can figure out how to unmute yourself. Nancy, you're still muted if you're trying to join us. Where's Nancy? Oh, here's Nancy. Okay. Moving on. All right. Anybody else have anything they want to add? Okay. Um, I'm, wait, yeah. I'm kind of curious. I've got a few famous people on my tree that are, yeah. you know, like third cousin type people. And I'm wondering if other people have some famous people on their trees. You know, names everybody would know. I don't think so. Anybody? Mm -mm. Not me. <laughs> Not so far. Um, uh, I, I have a... Uh, it's it's me again. I um my mother's first cousin is Abe Vigoda, you know the yeah. actor mm -hmm. Abe from mm -hmm. Godfather. Yeah. <laughs> well, there we go. Uh, we know we know where to peg you, Liz. 
Right. <laughs> um, Somebody has hand up. I'm a, I'm a somewhat distant relative of uh, Al Gore. Oh, oh well. Okay. Nancy, are you going to unmute yourself this time? Can't do it. Can't figure how to do it. We can't barely see you. Uh, yeah, there. You just see the top of your head. There we you go. Are. Can't figure how to unmute. Okay. Find the microphone with the line through it. There. there. No. Nope. Nope. Bill had his hand up at one point. Bill and Judy Gibson. Okay, I'm going to uh, real quickly, uh, next time we're going to talk about names and name research. Uh, it's one of my favorite topics. What I would like to do is ask any of you that have um, an interesting brick wall built around researching a name, please share it with me and I will give you some free research time in exchange for talking about it at the next meeting. So okay. George, uh, Bill Gibson had his hand up. Okay, we'll go to Bill. Where's yeah. Bill? Yeah, I'm here. There you are. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, I just had a question, uh, an interesting question. I'm doing some research, and I'm and I'm doing it on different uh, people. I won't maybe name names initially, but others. And I'm finding that when I do that, I'm mm -hmm. concerned that as I get information about it that I should be recording a reference. So in other words, if I go to Ancestry, I type in some information and then that information leads me to a family tree. And there are a number of different family trees, but I find what I want on a family tree. And I'm concerned that I should keep a reference on that. How do you do that? Or, or does anybody concerned about that? Because the the family tree, if you can read it, it's it's not a problem for privacy. Does that make sense? Sure, it makes sense. The okay. uh, there's a whole subculture in genealogy about how you record information. Okay. Um, the simplest way to do it, which which is really weird, but it actually works, is to uh, uh, take the URL that you're on when you find the information and yes. copy that into something that's a record. Okay. So that okay. Could, so what you'd be able to say is on August 22nd, 2022, okay, I found this record on okay. Ancestry. Okay. okay. That now records it. Okay. In using online uh, trees, family trees. Yes. Um, I would caution there are two things you want to keep at the top of your mind. The first one is you favor people who put in factual information about things and tell you where they got it, okay? So yes. somebody who says, I got this by looking at somebody else's tree, eh. Somebody <laughs> says, here is a link to the actual marriage certificate. And you say, I like that, okay? So I tend to focus a lot there. As I said, I use family trees primarily when I'm researching women because okay. of, of the whole problem of identifying maiden names. For yes, women. yes, very true. Fine, that's great. Thanks so much. Okay, anybody else? Well, thank you for joining us today and we will thank see you. you next week, guys. Next month, guys. <laughs> All right. And maybe next month we'll actually have an in, we'll have some of this in person. I apologize for having to cancel the in All right, that's all right. Takes better than nothing. <laughs>